Hello and welcome to Euphoria, a podcast where we look back on the great glam and the garish of Eurovision past. My name's Isabel Chilman and I'm joined, as ever, by a man who, as became glaringly clear last week, is continually dancing with the demons in his mind. Oh. But he's still a hero of our time. It's Roland Bodnan. Oh, I get it. I wondered why what I was what I'd done in in real life. It was the song, wasn't it? The song. Yeah, the song did that. The song. I've mm. been I've been having to sort of live with that for the last week in my own mm. head, just dealing with my own demons, as you say. Yeah. Well, it we was. decided online, didn't we? Anyone who doesn't follow us on Twitter, there was some good um, feedback. Fee- feedback. Let's call it feedback from <laughs> the group, um, which is that we've decided it's just Roland's way to purge. Yeah. Um, and make sure that he doesn't kill. Yeah. So he stays yeah. the nicest man alive <laughs> by purging this like awfulness I'm, inside of him. I'm sorry I have to inflict it on all of you though. Like <laughs> <laughs> you guys are the rather us witnesses than, than innocent bystanders. Yeah. You know yeah. we've signed up for this. <laughs> Yeah, you're you're in now. We've, yeah, you get the good, but you get the bad. Precisely. I think that's fair enough. Yeah, yeah that's, that's all, right. all right. Cool. You're right, Roland. I'm doing okay. Yeah, I, I had I was worried. I, I had a sore throat uh, just from generalness, oh. uh, but I think it's recovered enough to to be able to speak. And uh, so that's you, all right. You are speaking. I am speaking. So yeah. I think we're okay. If, I, if halfway through I just go si- deadly silent, it's just because I've lost my voice. Grasped him. The illness. <laughs> Oh, it's taken it. hold. Right. Uh, well, should we do the wine? Oh, uh, yeah. It's my week this week, and I've, as ever, I mean, classic Chillman. I've been chillers. really slack about it and forgot to get wine. So, <laughs> Raylan. Yeah. Can I introduce you in a bottle of Somontano Cabernet Sauvignon from Spain? Yeah, I would love some Somontano Cabernet Sauvignon from mm, Spain. The name Somontano means beneath the mountains oh. and this perfectly describes the location of this modern Spanish wine region in the foothills of the Pyrenees mm, mm. Lovely. it's full bodied and rich <laughs> just like me no I'm hey. not <laughs> I'm uh, cool alright um, but I did do a I just, up. well I just had a panic because I don't think I've got a bottle opener so we would have been great fucked. I was psychic I meant <laughs> yeah. to do that I knew that guys yeah, so yeah. here we, we go it? yeah go on okay uh, oh, that was a that was, that was like a triple pop. Yeah, that was good. That I was like a good click. That. Good, okay, good strong click. Let's give it a glug. Oh, smell. Mm. Oh, does it smell full bodied and rich? Oh, it's lovely. Mm. Oh, it oh it's lovely. <laughs> oh, it is dead lovely. Yeah. Oh, that was a deep glug. I feel like that was a double winner for a for a non corker. Delicious. It's uh, not bad. Really good glug. Yeah, lovely. Mmm. Mm. <laughs> Uh, so we're gonna I mean I don't have any but do you have any no right well there's no news this week so we're just gonna go on to any other business so I've got a couple of bits cool firstly my wonderful adorable friend Liz spent yesterday day before yesterday live texting me her experience (laughs) of watching the Daz Samson documentary oh my god I feel like that's Something we all should do. She wants to have annual screenings. <laughs> yeah, we should do it in a cinema. It is incredible. Yeah. Even there were even lines that she was texting me after. St- I've only really watched it recently. Yeah. But there were lines that she was texting me that I'd forgotten about already or had missed. Yeah. And there were things in in it like visuals that I hadn't clocked either. Yeah. So she was talking about the Barnyard Boys video. She was like, in the background, they were literally just mannequins wearing dungarees. <laughs> they just placed mannequins around in dungarees just to, to make, make it look it fuller. Busy. <laughs> How mental. It's genius. I mean, they were geniuses. They were... Absolutely genius. The guy, um, so that his partner, um, Ricky, Ricky, Ricky. Ricky of Ricky, Ricky and Daz. Yeah. Ricky's t-shirt just says, I am a goth on it. <laughs> He's not. Isn't it amazing? I mean, maybe on the inside, but... All of this needs to be, there needs to be some sort of really serious... Analysis. Second by second, frame by frame analysis yeah. of how incredible. And the editing, she again, yeah. highlight the editing. There was lots of screaming as well, just random screaming words being texted. <laughs> she was so excited about the whole thing. So thank you, Liz, for making my day at work fantastic. Yeah. We also have a wonderful email hey. um, from a good old friend of ours. Hey, hey, I'm, wa- I'm walking here. Oh. Hey, get out of my way. That's it's my accent. Chance the not quite rapper. Chance the, the not rapper from Brooklyn, who says, good morning. Morning, Isabel and Roland. Morning. 
Morning. Morning. Morning. Sure, it's morning here. Sure. Yeah. Wonderful show as usual. Domenico and Volare was a great topic. Mm. Such a beautiful song. Such a beautiful man. Oh, yes, he was. Dream babe. Babe. Regarding the Grammys, <laughs> and this is a good explanation for us. So this is, ah. and I'm going to highlight this before I say it. If ever we say stuff that we don't know, just correct tell us. us. Yeah. I want to learn. I always want to learn. Mm-hmm. Ask us Roland. We mm-hmm. need teaching. Chant says, regarding the Grammys, record of the year is awarded for the actual recording and given to singer, producer, engineer, like the whole uh, okay. shebang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? So, yeah. Song of the year is awarded for the composition of the song and thus given to the songwriters. Wow. Okay. So like producer like makes the song sound yeah. like so it does record on the record. Yeah. So record is the whole thing. Yeah. So the actual, like the melody might sound like shit, but the lyrics are great. Yeah. And you can still win yeah, song yeah, of yeah. the year. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I mean, you wouldn't, but you do. Know no, what no, mean. yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Oh, that's very, take it, you learn something new every day Love on, it. This, on this Great. podcast. Um, then he put a little thing in Asterix that says, 20 minutes later, as in like 20 minutes has gone 20 by since passed. he wrote that. And he went, Yeah, I'm rescinding, <laughs> oh. I'm rescinding my earlier wonderful show. I started writing this email while oh, still no. listening to the episode, and oh boy, <laughs> that song was appalling. <laughs> Uh, oh, I'm so sorry, The syncopating Charles. is made me dizzy. The bit where you're like, hey, oh, hey, hey, uh, hey, uh, yeah. doesn't... I just ran out of time and I, kept, I did it and then I had to live with it forever. Terrible. Forever. Isabel, I mean, then he seems to get confused and think that you are an actual puppy and not just that I treat you like one. <laughs> Maybe it is that I just treat you like one. <laughs> Isabel, please roll up a newspaper and thwap him on the nose so he hopefully learns to never do that again. I feel like you verbally did that. Oh, uh, yes. So, yeah, uh, don't yeah. worry. He's been told. I mean, we will get one, guys. Remember, he has to purge his sins. Yes. So this is what we do. <laughs> Chant signs off. Anyway, I must be going. Isabel, have a wonderful week. Oh. Roland, you're a monster. <laughs> I deserve that. <laughs> Chance from Brooklyn. I entirely deserve that. Thanks, Lovely. Chance from Brooklyn. Cheers. And you can tell the difference in class between me and Roland. I've not realised until just now. Ah, you say chance, chance, I chance. say chance. You say chance, I say chance. Let's call the whole thing a bloody good podcast. <laughs> Love it. So good. Uh, um, but yeah, this is actually it's quite nicely timed chance that you're emailing us. No chance. Um, because this leads us on to another bit of any other business, doesn't it, it Roland? It does. I think I'll let you lead on this one. We've got some very happy news, so no one worry. This is all very yeah, good. Yeah, we'll caveat with this. Uh, we'll. It's fine. It's all it's good. It's all fine. So I um, am going to be leaving these fair shores of the United Kingdom uh, <laughs> shortly in the next month or so, six weeks. I'm going to be moving to be closer to Charles, not for that reason, <laughs> but I will be. Uh, I am moving to the United States of America to be walking here in New York City. Woo-hoo! Um, I, yeah, I've, I've taken up a, a job over there. And as long as everything goes all right with my visa and they let me in, uh, fingers crossed. Bloody uh, Trump. <laughs> Let's ruin it for him now, yeah, guys. Like, yeah, you can't, can't, can't keep saying that now. Um, I'll be um, moving to the United States of America at the end of October. Yeah. Which is very, very exciting. So um, this podcast is going to continue. There's yes. lots of ways of doing it. There's lots yes. of podcasts that are produced uh, either trans-stately or transatlantically. Uh, so we basically do something. The sound quality is not going to change. We'll do no, it over Skype, but we'll record our two different ends. I will still be screeching into yeah. your ears, guys. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry about that. <laughs> um, I'm just going to get an, an American accent immediately. I'm going to be like, hey, welcome to the podcast. It's a me. No, that's Italian. <laughs> that's Italian. That's Mario. <laughs> okay, sorry. Become a video I game. I know, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's going to be happening and I can keep people updated if they're interested. If they're not, Yeah, then, no, we uh, will. So what um, we're going to do basically is there's still things to be worked out but the podcast is going to continue we will try to continue it as regularly as possible obviously we need to try it out in terms of me being here Roden being there there'll be a time delay obviously we're going to have to find days to record this on yeah. but we're going to suss all this stuff out it is going to continue we will keep the podcast so this season's going to run until the end of this season yeah. which will be towards like mid, mid the end of November yeah. then we're going to have a break over Christmas we're going to let Roland get settled down Yay. in New York and then in the new year we'll start again and then we'll be on the lead up to Eurovision Seriously. 2018 oh my I god know. it's so soon I know so I'm going to try and spread the Euro love into uh, the United States of America oh uh, and that's what you call it that's disgusting <laughs> Jesus I heard they do a lot of it over there no <laughs> um, but yeah so there we go that is my big bit of any other business my own my own we're so uh, bloody proud of him um, and I hope you're all proud of him too and Isabel will be visiting so actually we might do some from over there as well hell yeah um, so yeah that's it yay, yay. it's Congrats, been announced mate. now everyone now the world knows um, so that's our business 
business? I think, yeah, no, I think... Uh, Got any other business? No. Good. Right. Give us an email. Give us an email. Get Bloody hell, I forgot about that. Us. Yeah. yeah, so send us, you can contact us via email. So if you want to send us an email, you want to let us know what you're up to, what we've done wrong, what you've liked, um, rate any of Roland's songs, yeah. um, or just give him a lovely little virtual pat on the back for a good job and the fact he's good to New York because I am a puppy because he is a good boy he's done very well <laughs> um, then you can contact us on euphoriapodcast at gmail.com or if you want to do a shorter one and just say a sentence about how awful my song was uh, you can uh, get in contact with us on Twitter at at euphoriacast yes and leave a review on iTunes iTunes please rate review and subscribe on iTunes it's how we build our audience we make no money from this we actually lose money so (laughs) we do it we literally do it for the love yeah so um the wider audience we have it just makes us feel um less miserable (laughs) no I mean we're always happy we're very happy it's just really nice it would be really would mean a lot to us so if you could do that that'd be absolutely fantastic thank you so much yeah so Story. Yay. Favourite time time of the week. My week. Favourite time of the week. So today. Yeah. We are going to discuss a woman who was suggested to me by our wonderful friend and listener, Jaime. Jaime has sent one who actually has been mentioned in passing before by you. Ooh. Um, But we didn't go into really great detail and they're an amazing person. So. It warrants. It warrants a full full episode. Well, congratulations to them. congrats (laughs) congrats <laughs> for sure okay so today we're going to talk about singer humanitarian campaigner and queen of the gypsies <gasps> esma regipova oh yeah this is the one that uh, we talked about when she passed away yeah she sadly died okay last year. yeah yeah so we're going to talk about her brilliant excellent so esma was born on august 8th 1943 in skopje the capital of the republic of macedonia cool Uh, at the height of the Second World War. At that time, Skopje was occupied by the Kingdom of Bulgaria, allied to Nazi Germany. Uh, Although the region was returned to Yugoslavia just two years later. Okay, cool. She was the second youngest of six children in a Romani family. Her paternal grandfather was a Catholic Roma and her grandmother an Iraqi Jew, while her mother was a Muslim Roma from a village close by. So there's just there's some a heritage. Lot, there's a lot going on. There's there. a lot of heritage. Yeah, that's great. I mean, it's it's that's, a rich, that's needed to be said. A rich she's, um, she's all about the heritage. A rich tapestry yeah. of history there. Absolutely. So you've got yeah, Muslim, Catholic, and Romani. Jewish, and Jewish, and Romani, all in yeah, one big old mixed that's up a bag. Lot. Love that. That's how the world should be. What we need <laughs> is a great big <laughs> melting pot. <laughs> Big enough uh, to take the world and now so we can sing that so we can sing of it, otherwise we've got to pay. <laughs> we've got to pay now. Do we? That's just, that ten grand you just cost us. No. We don't have that. Oh no, how much of that could we play? No, we can sing that. We can include oh, that. Great. That's fine. <laughs> Love that song. Boys Own did a cover version of it. Oh god. Um <laughs> her father Ibrahim, who had lost a leg during a German bombing uh, in 1941, worked variously as a porter. Circus strongman <gasps> and shoe shiner. Well, hang on, no, one-legged circus strong. Or was that before he lost his leg? I feel I like I don't know. I mean, I mean, you know, there's a there's that a incredible a and shoe shiner and shoe shiner. I kind of hope all at once. Again, a lot of because skills. Because this is back in the day where you did have thirty bizarre jobs all at once. I love those circus strongmen. You don't really sit <laughs> like you don't go to the circus and Big see barrel-chested men yeah, you with moustaches anymore. Just no, a strong man. exactly. They don't get the animals out. I don't yeah. want the animals yeah. looking like I'm, they're sad and I'm. Yeah. Sad for them. I want a really massive man throwing things around. But even then, you go to Cirque du Soleil and there's like two brothers lifting each other, and it's like very impressive and cool. But really, I just want to see a big. I want to see Andre the Giant. Big muscly man lifting a woman in a chair. Mm, Roland, <laughs> it says a lot about you. Um, and I want to be drunk. <laughs> uh, we can organise all of this for okay, your leaving, cool. dude. Excellent. Absolutely. <laughs> Ibrahim sang and played drums, sometimes performing at weddings with Esma's siblings accompanying him. At age nine, Esma was introduced by one of her brothers to a local Romani music organization where she discovered her love of music. Excellent. Although insisting all of their children finish primary school, good for them. Yeah, smart. Esma's parents had very traditional views and expected her to get married in her teens and become a housewife. Wow. Mm. Mm. Let's see if Esma keeps up uh, with that belief. Mm, Let's see, shall we? (laughs) Nonetheless, their daughter was a very... She was a 
very sassy. She was very independent young yes. woman. And she would wear fashionable dresses instead of the traditional attire for Romany girls at the time. Good for her. She was her own person, yeah, you know? You do, you do you, Esma. You do you. Her parents' views, however traditional they were, were not going to stop her. Mm-hmm. And in 1956, Esma entered a national singing contest without telling her parents. That's like Milan, is it? No, not really. <laughs> Milan no. is something else. It's a, it's like a story. It's a story. It is a story. Telling I'm telling you a story. <laughs> okay. Her parents had made it clear that they did not want her to follow in the path of one of her older sisters who started to sing in cafes age 17. Among the Roma people, such a career was viewed as shameful for an unmarried girl because it would make them seem that they were unmarried marriageable. It seems very, it seems quite like a lovely European thing to do though. I know, if you like, if you move that exact same story into Paris, Paris. it would be really charming. After the war, oh, she went and sang in cafes and had a lovely time. It's just the, it's the traditions, it's the mindset, it's the culture behind it, that you swap those two things and one of them, it's a beautiful Audrey Hepburn movie. Yeah. And the other one, it's that this girl was told, you're not, no one's going to fucking marry you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's rough. Mm, Yeah. Good for her though, for doing it. Esma performed Abre Babi, a Macedonian Roma traditional song. We're going to play a little bit of Ooh, it now. Excellent. Have a little listen so you can just get in with the Macedonian Roma vibes. Let's have a listen. Okay. <laughs> Is the sort Very of fun. come in from a bustling sort of market and sit in a cafe and then that's playing in the background and you have a lovely yeah. glass of wine and a, and a cigarette. Great. Lovely. It was the first time a song in Romany was aired by the local radio station. Wow. Who was running the contest. And Esma won, yes. beating 57 other schools and winning 9,000 dinars. I don't know how much that is in normal money now. Let's say loads. Loads of money. <laughs> when Esma's parents learned about her success, oh. they were extremely upset and oh. reluctant to let her follow her musical career. Well, they stuck to their guns at least. Yeah. <laughs> I was about to say, Good oh, they come round to it when they see the nope. 9,000 dinars. No, they weren't no. happy. Okay. They thought it was a short term... God, this is a movie. This is a movie as well. Mm. They're all movies. Oh, it's really great. <laughs> this is a movie. It was, yeah, they thought it was a short-term bit, basically, that she'd become a musician, she'd have no success, yeah. then no one would marry her, and she'd be single forever. Stevo Tayodosoyevsky, an ethnic Macedonian musician and band frontman, was impressed by Esma's voice, though. He overheard mm. the contest. Mm. He loved it. Excellent. She considered her singing style as very ancient and traditional. This is later. This is what she said later. She didn't say this at the age she was now. She's quite no. young now. Stevo compared it to the sound of a silver bell. <gasps> oh, thank so you. Stevo. Stevo's fucking charming. I bet. Stevo. <laughs> Stevo wanted Esma to work with him. Basically, he, okay. he thought her voice was beautiful. He was. Uh, he really thought that this would. Um, um, it would be a great uh, move forward for for Roma music. So he arranged a contract with Ibrahim, who's Esma's father. Father. Uh, whereby it guaranteed that Esma's virtue and education would stay intact. Yeah. Uh, and as long as Ibrahim promised not to arrange a marriage for her before she turned 18. Wow, okay. Right. Stevo was a visionary, believing that Roman music could become esteemed and popular among non Romani people. Indeed, at that time, Roman music in Yugoslavia was depreciated and not considered suitable for radio or television. So okay. as I mentioned, hers yeah. was the first song that had been played. Yeah. Furthermore, racism against Roma people was very common in Macedonia and the rest of Yugoslavia. Mm. And either Roma people themselves had a poor image of Roma singers, especially female ones. So Roma l- performers, they never, so they were never on TV or radio stations. And if they were, they would hide their Roma origins. They would wow. pretend they weren't. So they were literally like, if you were a female Roma singer... No uh, one wanted to hear it. Like, you were the lowest of the low. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. And Esma was exactly that. Yeah. In 1961... The Ensemble, so this is Stevo's Ensemble, it is called uh, the Ensemble Tayo Dostoevsky. Okay, you're good, um, at these. you're good at these names. I'm getting there, yeah, I'm well practicing done. guys, I'm practicing. Went to Zagreb to record Esma's first record. It included Abre Babi, the song uh, she sang at the contest that we heard, yeah. as well as Chaye Shukai Shukaraye. Chaye Shukaraye. Okay. Yeah. A song she wrote herself that quickly became a huge success in Yugoslavia. Go, Esma. Good for her. 
The 1960s and 70s were extremely successful for Esma, recording many albums and EPs, and took um, and she took part in a number of radio and television shows. Her so she's so she, like it's becoming more acceptable to have. She's making it more. Acceptable. She They're is just leading nailing the way. It. She Fucking is leading the way. Man. She is the one person doing this. Her performances were extremely theatrical. Wow. With her beauty, charm, striking voice, and performance skills quickly making her famous across Europe. Amazing. So this was part of it, I think, is that she just had this kind of no fucks given attitude yeah. of I am a great performer and I'm nailing this. Yeah. And you just had to get on board. And yeah. she is. She's very engaging when you watch her perform. Yeah. She's very exciting. She's just Oh, yeah, you can you can totally tell how she, you know why she was the person that managed to lead that. win people over. Yeah, and lead, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. lead that charge. Oh man, that's amazing. On stage and in her music videos, Esma played with stereotypes linked to gypsy women, using traditional attire and dancers. The Middle Eastern character of her performances was often enhanced to please non-Romani audiences. So she was savvy. Yeah, she was very smart. She you know fully understood the racism basically yeah. that was going on all around her towards yeah. so many people and she used it to her advantage and she to, also, win, to win them over. And she's also not denying her roots because she does no. have Middle Eastern heritage but yeah. she's never turning her back on the Roman because it seems like her music is, is you know, uh, inherently, you know, ha has yeah. those Romany traditions yeah, and those definitely. Romany traditions. Completely and, running through it. Yeah. But she would be very clever in terms of the audience she was performing to. So costumes worn by Esma and her dancers um, can, were often in inaccurate to Macedonian Roman culture, Roman uh -huh. culture, which would annoy uh, people of that culture. Like traditional, yeah. But she would move it towards looking like Hungarian or Russian costumes mm. so that if she was performing in front of that audience, mm it would match their expectations of what they wanted to see. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's, it's, so she was really clever yeah. about how she would do this. Yeah. But despite her success, as I mentioned, you know, she was she was a target for racism and for, and, and gossip because mm. of who she was and she was different to everyone else. She's a woman putting herself out there. Exactly. <laughs> Roma people in Skopje thought of her as dishonorable for the community and were very critical about her relationship with Stijo, uh, Stevo, sorry, a gajo, which is a rather dis respectful term for someone who's non-Romani. Okay. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So at the time, it was unthinkable for Macedonians and Romani to engage in mixed marriages, and both communities strongly disapproved of their relationship. So they had a relationship? They got together. Okay. Oh. When she was a bit older. Yeah, yeah, together. no, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Esma was frowned upon by Romani because she had a, a, a very emancipated lifestyle. So she performed on stage, she slept in hotels, she, she worked alongside men as their equals. Yeah. Uh, and on the other side, institutions, uh, including Radio Skopje and the League of Communists in Macedonia, were very critical about Stevo and reproached him for working with gypsies and alongside mm. them. So to escape the stifling atmosphere that had surrounded them, Esma and Stevo moved to Belgrade, the capital of Yugoslavia, at the beginning of the 1960s, and they married in 1968. Hey! Lovely stuff. Good for them. Good for them. You know, I mean, you know, you spent... But again, this is just people, this is being pe people being angry about people being free. Yeah. That's what it comes yeah, down yeah. to. Esma was a free gypsy woman. She wasn't hiding her heritage. Nope. She was throwing it out in front of everyone to see, but yet people weren't happy about it because yeah. she was a free woman. Yeah. Esma mostly sang in Romani and Macedonian, but also recorded songs in Serbo-Croatian, Turkish, Hebrew, Greek, and Hindi. She's a smart woman. She is great. She's a smart woman. The Roman people came from India to Europe in the Middle Ages, and that heritage was extremely important to her. Mm. Esma and Steve visited India three times. You can actually, you can hear it when you listen to the music, the song we played earlier, you can hear yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that influence that's definitely come from that area. Yeah. Um, and Esma and Steve visited India three times in their lives. Uh, and during the second trip, they were given the title of King and Queen of Romani Music at the first Re Roman Music Festival in Chandigarh. Wow. That's cool. That is pretty amazing. And I want to be, be queen of something. I know. Esma and her husband continued to perform all over the world. And in 1962, she was the first Yugoslav artist to perform at the Olympia in Paris. So still smashing, smashing down it. those walls. Smashing it. Get out the way, Esma's coming through. How old is she now? Like 30, 40? 1962, what did I say she was born in? 40. 43? She's tw 20. 20. Fucking hell. She's 21. She's done a lot. 
She's doing all right, she's isn't she? She's doing okay, yeah. Esma was known for her unique sense of fashion. Of course she was. Yes. Sassy little so-and-so. Sassy Esma. She often wore heavy jewels on stage and had a collection of over 300 colourful turbans. Fucking hey. I want to get to that. Imagine that room. Imagine oh, that. <laughs> you walk into that room and it's just like turbans as far oh as the eye can God. see. <laughs> so fun. That's oh the God, point that I want amazing. to get to. Yeah, that'd be amazing. You'd have a room for like headwear, shoes. I'm getting there with the shoes, aren't you, I? Mate, you're. I'm so proud of that. that well, you know, it, I have. Unit. I have bookshelves in my bedroom. No books. Listeners, <laughs> um, no, the books have been moved to get out of the way. Yeah. And I've slowly just got rid of them over the years and replaced them all with, like, I'm. And I'm no, no joke. Maybe five, six, seven, eight inch high heels. Amazing. Heels. They're right. I'm. I'm they're really glorious. proud. Like, look, you're really going, you proud of me. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> honestly, like going into that room and looking at those shelves, I was like, I'm proud that Isabel. <laughs> like, <laughs> they are my greatest accomplishment. Is it's those, that collection of heels? It will be glorious. It will be given to a museum one day. Oh. oh after you die. I really like. It will be your. That. It will be your. My legacy. Yeah, your legacy. Heels. <laughs> it will be. You have a fine collection. They're beautiful. Thank you. Back to Esmond. Mm. In 1997, Esmond's dear husband, Steve-O, unfortunately died of cancer at the age of 72. 19 years her senior, the couple never had children of their own, but fostered 47 abandoned or deprived children during the 1970s and 80s. They raised five of them under their roof as their own children and yeah. ensured a home and education for the others. Well, I am the saddest that she's died right now. Like, I know before we reported on it and we were sort of said, oh, yeah, she's great, blah, blah, blah. But, like, the fact that she is no longer with us and her however many hundred turbans and her... I know. But what a legacy she's left as well. Not only her turbans, but the beautiful children who she All brought the children, up. 47 Like, children. you think of where they were and where their lives could have turned out and mm. she went, nope. You're going to... So they basically created like a music school. Yeah, oh, right. So the five that lived with them actually lived with them as their children. Like the Von Trapps. the other ones, they went through... They all, they all basically put them through this music school. Oh, my God. That was part of the ensemble. Um, yeah. The, uh, yeah. Ensemble. Um, Steve-O's death, along with, at the time, the collapse of Yugoslavia that was going on around mm. them, devastated Esma, both emotionally and financially. But rather than retire... She reinvented her career, recording with Balkan pop singers and folk bands while surfing the wave of Western interest in gypsy music. Ooh, nice. Mm. Um, she also once settled, once she resettled back in Skopje, uh, had begun to speak out on all manner of issues surrounding the Roma people, funding charities to work with women and children and campaigning for universal education and on behalf of Roma refugees from Kosovo. For her humanitarian work, the Macedonian government twice nominated Esma for the Nobel Peace Prize. She is badass. She's incredible, She's right? She's fucking great, yeah. And when you look at this, like, obviously I'm doing a very brief overview yeah. of her incredible life, but when you look into this properly, basically, whenever times got a bit tough or her music career faltered, she didn't, you know, throw a wobble. She just mm. went, all right, well, I'll just do charity work now. Yeah. All right, well, this isn't working. Oh, we'll just do, some, we'll just look after some kids now. Yeah. All right, we'll just do that, like... She oh just God. kept going. It wasn't that, you know, music was very important to her, yeah. but when her music career wasn't being successful, she just threw herself into charity and political work yeah. instead. And then when her music came back around, she was like, okay, great, I get to do music again. Yeah. Fine, okay, off I go. You know, that nothing seemed to worry this woman. Oh, lovely, I'm inspired. Woman. Then came the noughties, ah. which marked a significant shift in the singer's career. In Macedonia and former Yugoslavia, Esma gained a more modern image and redefined herself as a world beat artist. Mm. World beat being a blend of Western pop or rock music with more traditional world music. Okay. Okay. Nice. Yeah, mm. I love it. She's, she's like... She's going with the flow. Also, how old is she at this point? In the noughties, she's 60 plus. She's fucking... She is Madonna before Madonna was Madonna. Like, how many times does she I, want to reinvent herself? I'm going to whisper this. Yeah. No, 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 no. Okay, well, how about this? And all the gays hate me for saying that. <laughs> I get shouted at. I like, um, like, Vogue era Madonna. Yeah, 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 yeah. But she as herself, I don't like. No, that's fine. And I she, don't like her modern music. She's a bit pretentious. So that? actually, I would say... Oh, better. Esma's better. Yeah, yeah, no, I would, <laughs> I would agree with you. She just reinvents herself. And reinventing oh, yeah. yourself at the age of 60... Slash 60 plus. 60 plus 
is quite something. Good for her. Good for you, Esma. I don't know how many times I've said that in this, this good, yeah. episode. <laughs> the whole episode is just really going, good for you. Good for you. you know good what? for you. Good for you. <laughs> Love it. Um, her best known single, Chaya Shuka Raye, uh, is the song that, so we mentioned it earlier. So actually that song was used in the opening credits of the 2006 Borat movie soundtrack. Oh, God. Which she claims was used without her permission. Oh, shit. So she actually, she sued the producer of the film wow. initially for 800,000 euros for using it, uh, eventually winning 26,000 euros okay. because it turned out that the film received permission from her production team, her production house, without yeah. her knowledge, she wasn't told. Yeah. But she was mostly just very upset about it being used because the film represented to her a portrayal of a very backwards non-Western culture, which was a stereotype that she had fought her entire life mm-hmm. against mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. To, to stop people thinking of uh, of Roma cultures like that. So she was quite upset about that. I can imagine, yeah. It was, I mean, that was a very controversial film all round mm-hmm. in terms of the representation of When I was writing this, Kazakhstan. I was thinking about it earlier. Yeah. In terms of... Do you think that film... I, that film is not even that old. It's 2006, right? Yeah, yeah, so that yeah. film is just over 10 years old. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Do you think that film would be made now? Because um, I don't think it would. Mm, uh, no, it's very tricky. I mean, the conversations were had at the time, right? Of like, you know, it, it's unfairly representing Kazakhstan as a very yeah. you know, exceedingly backwards country. Um Although I feel like it equally represents the United States as a backward country. Yeah, and that was the, that was like meant to be the, the main point. The of argument, it. right? Yeah, yeah the main the, argument was yeah. look at Americans, aren't they stupid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think it would though. I think because I because on and we've gone off on a tangent, but like on Facebook, uh, Channel Four have been re-releasing some of like those um, old Ali G show things to sort of push the box set that you can watch on demand. Yeah. And I've been watching the ones that are um, Borat, like the, the other sequences, mm. and they are just him in like England going to a fox hunt. And because it's completely like, it doesn't have a context, it's almost like, here's a foreign man, which sounds bad, but here's a- Generic foreign. Generic foreign man who really isn't talking about himself much, but it's just, just like- showing how out weird English culture yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. Or like, yeah. you know, America, or like yeah. Bruno when he yeah. goes to America and hangs out with frat boys. But the film does make it very specific. There's about 20 about minutes him. at the start where it's like, I'm in, I'm I'm in Kazakhstan. I'm and my, Yeah, and, and like, we, we rape our women and stuff, yeah. It's mental. That's it's that's there. Yeah, that's a rough bit. Yeah, you're I right. Genuinely, you're I right. hadn't thought about yeah. it until I read yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. I don't feel like the, I don't feel like there is not a place for quite controversial satire these days. Absolutely. La, you know, you know, people pushing the envelope, like you know, Brass Eye, or mm-hmm. yeah, you know, yeah. uh, you know, to an extent, like Bruno and and um, uh, Borat, but. Yeah, I think it, don't pick on them. Don't pick on them. Yeah, ones don't that don't use don't, don't use it. it to get laughs out of yeah exactly minorities. no cheap use it, laughs. Use it to get laughs out of the privilege, and that's what satire's for. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish I could have filmed Roland taking well, <laughs> a swig of his wine as you said that. Welcome great. to the culture show with his man mm, Roland. We fucking mm. wish we had a culture show. That would be so good. At Sorry, it. I mean I'm gonna have to cut. We like, should do half that. Of... We should do like an anti-culture show, <laughs> which is us. Drinking wine just and just talking like shit. Like a, a satire on a satire. satirical, yeah, satire on satire. <laughs> no, because we'd get too into it and then we'd just start talking. I'd just rant about culture. Tories, wouldn't I? <laughs> and I would talk I've about... I've done that twice to this week already. Uh, so I'm going to, just so you know, that conversation lasted a fair while. I'm going to have to cut it down by at least half, but that's so fine. So it doesn't make sense. <laughs> no, 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 it'll make sense, but just know that that conversation we went on a lot longer. went on a long time. <laughs> Jesus, right. Back to the story. <laughs> Where do we get to? About? Esma. Okay. Okay. Particularly noted for her powerful and emotional voice, in 2010 she was cited among the 50 great voices in the world wow. by NPR, a prominent American media organization. We all know NPR. I love NPR. Amazing. She was one of the 50. Wow, amazing. Shit, man, that's such a good thing to have. Good for her. Voices. Voices. Great voices, Esma. Then in 2013, Esma was selected together with Vladklo uh, Lozanowski to represent Macedonia in the Eurovision Song Contest. Yes. Their song, Imperia, or Empire, was unveiled in March, uh, but was eventually withdrawn due, due to dissatisfaction with the song wow. and complaints from the Macedonian public. Jesus. So we're going to play a bit of the song because we're going to play both of both songs. It was replaced by another one. Okay. We're going to place this one first. So this was basically withdrawn. It's very hard to find the reasons why. But fundamentally, it came down to 
a people viewed it as a nationalistic you know, act that it was talking against the state. So I don't know, people oh, didn't like it. So okay. we're gonna play it though, because okay. I think it's fun. <laughs> Wow. So within, so there's a bit of a <laughs> verse with a guy within. So that's Flacco. Yeah. Within about four seconds of her appearing, she's already worn four outfits. Yeah. <laughs> <She's> like, <laughs> All the turbans. Like literally every single shot is like different outfit, different mm-hmm. outfit, different outfit. She's fantastic. That is amazing. She's glorious. For, right. She just, goodness shines out yeah. of her. For like 70 something at this stage, she is absolutely she, yeah, smashing she is early, it. She must be 70. Yeah. She's yeah. smashing it. Nailing life. Love, Love that. It. That's a great song as well. I wasn't expecting that. No, it's a really fun I song. I wasn't expecting I, that. I wasn't expecting that at all. <laughs> if you are an X Factor or Danny Minogue fan or just very in tune with gay culture, you will know exactly what that reference is. I'm not going to explain it. So, uh, <laughs> um, the song had to be replaced, basically. Oh. It got taken out, replaced with um, Pred da Zerazdini, or Before the Sunrise, which was released a month later. So we also have a clip of this. Also sung by her. Yeah, it's the same. It's them. Same duo. But... Okay, well, let's have a listen. They balls it up. So I would give that at least eight points for her outfit alone. Her outfits are great, but the, but the first song was better. Yeah, like it. The it first song of, was more fun. It doesn't. It, she's not. A, she's not a joke. But no. it, like, it feels like the other song like really like uses both of their singing to their advantage, and it and it plays out really well. Whereas this song is kind of like here's a man singing and he's nice and good looking, and here's a and here's a Romany woman. Here's a Romany woman in her outrageous outfit yeah. to walk on and do it. Yeah, guys, if you're going to do. <laughs> yodeling and rap combine the two together, <laughs> together. in a beautiful harmony that we yeah. all know and love yeah. don't just throw the yodeling in for fun yeah 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 yeah. okay she looks amazing and she really like going out there with full force like she is giving it oh, everything just I just damn. feel like the composition I really want to start wearing I should I think I'm going to start wearing outfits that were one colour oh my god yeah, yeah because yeah, that's yeah. her vibe and she yeah. nails it yeah Unfortunately, that song failed to advance from the second semi-final of the competition, okay. placing 16th in the field of 17 songs. So not high. Not good. It not would have done high. better if they released the first song. I'm just saying. Yeah, no, I agree. It was a good song. But the loss didn't stop Esma from remaining an icon and increasing the knowledge and love for Roman music all over the world. Yeah. Her last UK performance was at the Royal Festival Hall in London in 2009 as part of the legendary Gypsy Queens and Kings show, of which, as always, Esma was very much the star. I can. She is the star wherever she goes. Everywhere. And also, just so you know, the Royal Festival Hall is a big hall. Oh, it's amazing. It's one of the biggest in London. Like mm. that's, a, it's a, that's a big venue to be filling. Not that it's surprising, but that's, no. that's a incredible big space. On the morning of December 11th, 2016, Esma died after a short illness, aged 73 years old. Her funeral took place a day later with the mayor of Skopje and the Macedonian president, George Ivanov, paying homage to her on the day. She was much loved. In her lifetime, Esma recorded and released more than 580 songs, Fuck. including two platinum and eight gold discs. Shit, that's pretty good. Just wait for this next one. Oh, bit. okay, hang on. <laughs> she performed, you're going to lose your shit. She performed more than 22,000 <laughs> concerts worldwide, right? Wait. A third of which were held for various charities. Oh. 7,000. How many has Gary Barley done? Like maybe 30. Tax evader. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Uh, Jesus Christ. So 20 something. 22,000 22, concerts worldwide. Over 7,000 of them will have been for charity. Because I was about to go, like when you said like she'd done like recorded like 500 songs, made like mm. written 500 songs. I was like, well, I've done 30. So nearly 10% <laughs> of hers. But then when you said 20,000, I was like, nah, I was, no, no, haven't done, no, haven't done none of them. How, I want to know, is anyone good at maths and can work out how many aged from 14 to 73? Was so she that when 365. She 14 to 73. How many concerts did Fucking she have to do hell, a day? Yeah. I can't so do 365 maths. times, how many years was she, was she so from 14 to 73? 60, 59. Yeah, 59. Times 59. Yeah. Equals. So there was... There was only 21,535 days in her life. Wait, what? 21,000. <laughs> well, in the time that she was performing. So 14 to 73, she performed 22,000 <laughs> no, concerts. No, 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 that can't, that can't, that's not, that can't be right. That's the fact. But she performed more concerts than there were days in her life. Yeah, she must have done like three a day sometimes. I mean, if it's... <laughs> Fact. I mean, it's on the podcast now, so it's fact. Like, I'm too I'm not, drunk to care. No, now. I'm not. No, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just saying that's amazing. It's incredible. It's amazing. Her life was music. Music oh, no, no, was yeah, her life. Absolutely. She. Yeah. There's still more to go, and I'm getting drunker, so we have to keep. Okay. <laughs> let's do it. Okay. Esma was an honorary president of the Macedonian Red Cross in recognition of her extensive work with Romani refugees from Kosovo. Fucking hell. Incredible. Okay, now when I said it earlier about like, oh, it's an inspiration for your life, like, I'm already too tired. Like, <laughs> I'm already she did worn a lot. She's fucking like in done a lot. In 73 years, yeah. incredible. Okay. She supported Roma and uh, women, uh, women's rights and was also involved in local politics in her hometown. Chaya Shukareya, or Beautiful Girl, as the song is actually known in English, remains an anthem for all Roma all over the world. I'm going to play a bit of it now. Okay. That is great fucking song. great, man. All of, the, all of those songs. Man, I need to get some more like Eastern European vibes in Your my brother's life. into world music though, right? He is a little, well, you know, Rebecca was talking about it the other day. Yeah, he is no. a little bit. No, he is. No, he is. He is. He is. He is. He is. Digby. Um, Show Ronan in the ropes. No. I'm going to ask my dad to. My dad, that thing, my dad's into loads of amazing world music. Yeah. Oh my God, did you see what my dad did today? <laughs> <laughs> you have to Okay, yeah, this. no, this is, yeah, this is Sorry, the first this is third the diversion. last diversion. We're almost at because the end, Because this guys. is amazing. Thank you for sticking with it. <laughs> my father, the Reverend, Reverend Shulman, oh God, yeah. in Canada, posted on Facebook <laughs> earlier today 18 photos that he took of a snake eating a frog. <laughs> No, a fish. It was a fish. It was a fish. He stood for 45 minutes. I mean, who wouldn't do this? It's incredible. He stood for 45 minutes and watched a snake eat a live fish while photographing it and then put it all on Facebook. What a legend. <laughs> it was like, it was like- They're amazing own, photos. Yeah, it was like our own David Attenborough. I wouldn't have got that close. I'd have been fucking terrified that it would eat me. I, well, I would have been worried I'd have scared it. Oh no, I'm not worried about that. If if a snake's eating and the a fish, fish is live, and you can just see the fear in its face while it's getting <laughs> swallowed by this fish, and then the final shot of just this this snake with a big lump in its belly, looking really pleased with itself, it's incredible. If you go to my Twitter at Isabel Chilman, I S O B E L C H I L L M A N, I've tweeted four of the pictures. They're incredible. How does a snake meet a fish to start with? Like that fi- Where did it find either, the fish? Either that fish was in the wrong it's place. It's a weird looking fish. Or that it's got a massive head. Maybe it was a land fish. I think it looks, it does look like one of those ones that's slightly evolved, but not enough. Because you know I mean? it can't fight off a snake. Oh, it's so, Dad, I, anyway, love, I love you. Look, right. look at Carry those on. pictures. Esma rose from poverty to be fated by world leaders as an eloquent spokesperson 
for Europe's Roma people. A confidant of the Yugoslav president, um, Josef Tito, and a cultural ambassador for the Republic of Macedonia. She advocated for large-scale cross-cultural understanding and pacifism. She also defended women's rights and their access to power, both on politic, uh, political and economic levels. She will remain one of the most powerful voices in the world of gypsy music, defending that Roma music was inventive, evolving, and could be enjoyed by people all around the world. God bless you, Esma. She's fucking... How great is that? Oh, my God. She's fucking brilliant. She's amazing. Beautiful human. And her yeah. and Steve-O, there, there was a wonderful bit as well that, you know, and I didn't... I genuinely... Oh, I, I, I thought twice about putting it in or not because I didn't want to take away from her incredible um, feats through her life and something that she did th- incredibly throughout. You know, all of this stuff she did, mm-hmm. she fought for, she really pushed forward um, and led the way and everything. But there was a great bit that I read about when she was asked who her musical influences were and who her inspiration was throughout her life. She said that she didn't have any, but that everything she did was because of her husband, because of how how much he he had influenced her in terms of inspiring her to to, to think forward and to mm. and to be that person. So he, from reading, you know, when you read through her obituaries, that you know, these beautiful um, pieces that were written about her after she died last year, that were saying that basically as soon as he saw her, he knew that she could pave the way for Romani music and for Romani culture throughout yeah. the world and really be the forefront of it and that she just totally went with it and the fact that she had him supporting her through it and saying, um, saying, you can do this. Mm. You are the person yeah. to do this. Look how incredible you are. Your voice is beautiful. You are a force to be reckoned with. Yeah. Go for it. Just go for it and I'm not going to hold you back. And he didn't at any point. He supported her the whole way so that she was front and centre and, and was the face of the whole thing. That that, that support was clearly there and that, that um, you know, that translates. Oh, Lovely. Another story about a beautiful Eurovision person. I love it when we do... See, most of the people involved in Eurovision are beautiful humans. And that's why we, and by we, I mean me, get very mad when there's <laughs> mean people involved in Eurovision. Because it is a place for beautiful humans yeah. who love the world. It's some... not for the racists. It's not for the homophobes. It's not for the sexists. It's not for anyone mean. Sometimes it's just fun to get angry at the racists and sexists and homophobes, though. So. Uh, always <laughs> just a little bit of anger it's yeah. good for you anger and and sadness are as legitimate emotions yeah. as happiness and joy I mean this is never def- forget that this is definitely mine and Isabel's like weekly sort of therapy get your emotions out session oh yeah <laughs> drink some wine <laughs> rant about stuff I don't even remember what we've talked about right now mm. I am drunk. quite drunk the, uh, song okay we're moving on to song yeah song time okay it cannot physically in any context be worse than last no. week so, so I, you know you're getting higher than a one hopefully I have had to live with the burden of and I, there was a shame <laughs> it's was, like Game of Thrones there was a big big reaction on Twitter last week to my uh, um, can you call it a song we we don't know um, last week so I have you know I've and you know there's a big negative reaction I feel like I put something very negative out into the world so this week I have tried to put something positive into the world. Mm. I have tried to put something empowering mm. into the world. Uh, so I have written... Hallelujah. Ha- what? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, so I have written, and I know I've, do- I've done one of these before and it did very, very well. And whether that was down to circumstance or not, I don't know. Oh. And it's, this isn't a breakup song. This is a song... Yeah, that's not going to do well because I ain't been broken no, up No, no, you're like, I don't care. Fuck him. <laughs> it's better to be single. Give a shit. In fact, on that word, it's better to be single. This is a, you've returned to me asking Ooh. for my love again, but you know what? I'm better than that. Oh! This is a song called Can't Tie Me Down. Also, <laughs> are the 80s back in fashion? I heard they are. Here we go. Ooh, you come my way. And then you look me in the eyes and say I've worked it out, now I'm here to stay But this time I'm no better than that And ooh, I turn away I feel empowered by the pain you gave The look you made makes me feel the same Cause this time I'm no better than that And you know it Your power's got no power on me for the first time I'm not back in your arms I see the lies disguised by your charm Time to show it You better get your running shoes on 
tell your little friend it's about to go down I'm gonna run you out of town I call it strong, you call it crazy I never wanna hear you call me baby You're looking weak, look a little sad lately I'm feeling good cause I'm going up Can't tie me down I'm feeling ten times stronger here on my own Cause this little girl has grown and I've thrown you down You won't mess around Cause you've got nothing now that I found That you can't tie me down Ooh, I hear them say I hope you're good, hope you're all okay Well honey, take your worries away Cause there's no better feeling today Ooh, look at me Look how good it is to be free The skies are clear and it's easy to see That you're no good for me Now I'm looking up I can't tie me down I'm feeling ten times stronger here on my own Cause this little girl has grown Now I've thrown you down, down, down You won't mess around Cause you've got nothing now that I found That you can't tie me down Time me down. It's a little positive ditty about being an independent woman. <laughs> <laughs> Something Roland knows a lot about. Uh, oh, yeah, it's good work, Ray. Right? It's a little no, bit of fun. A little that. bit of positive. It's a little bit fun. I feel like we have you, a giggle, don't we? You know, you're a little, you're drunk, and that helps. <laughs> it does help. I am drunk. It's better than last week. Oh my god, hugely better than last week. So. Um, loved the beginning yeah. right at the start yeah. was vibing off it yeah. a lot yeah, yeah. I feel like the chorus yeah. could have been better yeah, no, I know I need a bit of Daz in there mm, I feel like not I, saying that <laughs> but it could have been a bit more I think they just could have been improved we were in that yeah what was the bit about little friend you and no, your little friend no, oh yeah no I was just like you and your like shitty little friends like our little like, friends yeah maybe I didn't plural. pronounce the S yeah it's it sounds like, like you were saying little friend it sounds like a being, penis well again <laughs> all these times like I know that I'm definitely more the crass one on like a regular basis through my swearing but whenever it comes to me trying to be subtle and then just goes do you know man like a dick like sex <laughs> like a big cock like a cock and like oh my god <laughs> Jesus I mean, Christ. I mean, it's you know, it's up for interpretation. But okay. if I'm saying you and your little friend, it's like, mm, and your little I friend. I don't know if Yon would like that. No, but that's fine. Yon, that's allowed. In, I mean, let's say your little friend. I'm like, that's not penis. That's your like shitty little friends that you hang out with and watch football with. Yeah, friends. Because I'm an independent woman. Friends. Okay, I'll make. I'll make you sure. You need right. to add the ass. Okay. okay. What about if you only have one friend? Okay, well, anyway, 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 anyway. Actually, I've dated someone who had one friend, and it was his brother. <laughs> it was not, oh God. Um, <laughs> Didn't end well. Might listen to this still. Hi. Um, probably not. No. Um, <laughs> anyway. Let's move on. Um, okay, I liked it. 80s vibe, right? Improvement on last week massively. Okay, good. Not as good as some others, no. and I feel like on the night at Eurovision, it would get lost in the noise. Do you remember last year, there was that group of girls, group of women called... Ogon, or like they had a three in their name, Ogine or something. Yeah, the ones that were that basically sounded like, like um, acapella kind of. Turn around and say goodbye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do that, yeah. Um, but, but it wasn't it, them. Exactly it. Yeah. But, so if they sung this song, and I'm, oh, I'm with yeah, you, like the yeah, chorus yeah, 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 yeah. could do you, work. I'm with you. I'm but with like you. a group I'm of like you. powerful women being like, you can go fuck off and you can go and die. It, oh wow. Okay. Yes. No. <laughs> not it that. would totally be that vibe doing it which actually fits very in well into my mindset and my final oh, score for this interesting. because again that yeah. good song you're gonna not you're not gonna be like bottom half of no. the the right hand no. side of the board no, yeah. you're gonna do reasonably well no. but it's not quite stand out enough no. No, no, to no. be top five top six top seven yeah, that's, that's fine, that's fine. That's okay fine. I, get it. I get it i get it give me a score for what did i call it <laughs> Can't tie me down. Can't tie me down is getting set. Seven. Seven. That's, I mean, that's pretty good. That's, I'm happy with that. Yeah. Eight, good. 10, 12, seven. Exactly. Yeah. So there's, you're, you're not, you know, I did, eight is too top, high. It's not a top And end. you're definitely not jumping any numbers. So that's the, now we've changed the, yeah. The, the proper Just phase. so everyone knows. 
the jumping numbers bit is important for me. Yeah. So if you jump a number, it's got to be something significant. Yeah, yeah, you're no, not jumping numbers. There's fewer. You're not quite an eight. You've had some eights recently and they were I fucking don't, slamming. Don't really get it. This one, I was dancing, I was vibing, yeah. I liked it. But you but forget it. I, I could pick point, I could pick holes yeah. in it. Yeah, yeah. And when you get to the end of it. Oh, great. Uh, shall we wrap up? <laughs> Let's wrap up now, guys. Okay, so this has been a long podcast long show um quickly if you want to contact us at any point whatsoever euphoria podcast at gmail.com you can contact us on twitter at euphoria cast you can also tweet me or roland you can find us really easily on our twitter the group twitter please do get in touch rate review subscribe on itunes all of that stuff we love you very much right roland yeah. this is a really quick question to sum up with <laughs> okay i'm I gotta be it's so long i gotta be on it okay roland bodnam yeah yes would you rather yes have a voice like Salvador or a body like man's. <laughs> I'm body like man's all the time. Come oh, on. I'm you. the shallowest fucker so you fucking could shallow. ever. <laughs> so shallow. Really? Imagine just see when he rips his shirt open. I could talk like this the whole time because But you'd be such a mean man. No, man's is not. No, a mean man's man. is lovely, but I mean men like that in general. <sighs> but I can just rip my a shirt voice, over. Here's me, here's me at a bar, Salvador. right? A woman's like, oh, he's really mean, and then I just go, rip. <laughs> <laughs> and then I've got I've got their attention. So that's it. A body like okay. mine. <laughs> that's been answered right into the shallow. We love you very much. We'll speak to you next week. <laughs> love Goodbye. you. Bye. <laughs>